a lot of the stuff they said was real and offensive, but nobody was offended by what was being said. Like yeah. you're George Carlin and you're Richard Pryor and those guys who were like the, you know, the beginning of what we have now, th- those guys said things like they saw things and they didn't care what people really thought about it. And a lot of that stuff you could be offended by if you chose to be, but it wasn't, that wasn't the culture back then. And it wasn't the culture until maybe the past, what, five, 10 years that people really started giving a shit about what the comedians were saying or taking well, it personally, what they're saying. It's not even necessarily about it. Well, it, people do give a shit about what they're saying. Like I said, when we talked about Ari Shafir and the joke he made about Kobe, whether you think it's a joke or not, he still gets to say it. If you don't like it, don't listen to him. Don't pay attention. Uh, but he shouldn't have had to apologize for that. I don't think it's it's not in my personal taste to joke about the dead and their dead child and other people's dead children. But he has that right and he shouldn't have to apologize. And I shouldn't have to apologize for saying he shouldn't have to apologize. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's what it's become. But so I'll take it even a step further. You said Pryor and Carlin. How about Lenny Bruce? Yeah. Lenny Bruce would say things on purpose so that he would go to jail, so that he was making a statement for all of those trying to do what he was doing, saying, hey, it was almost like he was martyring, martyring himself to make the art more readily available, not only to people who wanted to be comedians, but also for people who were listening to go, hey, it's okay. It's okay if you say something that might be deemed controversial or someone... And, and I think the main point is like, you're going to say something that someone's not going to like, no matter how positive you think it is, right? Mm-hmm. Someone's not going to like it. You don't have to apologize. You shouldn't have to. That's what freedom of speech is. Um, yeah, but there should be thought that comes along with it too. Not just immediate, I'm pissed off because you said that, but more like, okay, I, uh, I 100% agree with what you just said. Or I don't agree with that. No, let's move on with life. Whatever. Yeah. Well, look, you're right. You're right. But also when I say what happened to comedians, I, not only with the apologizing, but when did they just get so soft? When did the lifestyle change to this woke sort of watered down sort of like thing where like they're afraid of any controversy. So on the last show, maybe two shows ago, I asked about, have you heard a peep from Chris D'Elia? Right. And we both were like, I don't know. I don't fuck. I the good. I don't know. Did he dis- he disappeared? Look, he got accused of some nasty shit. He didn't do anything wrong. For those that don't know, he was accused of engaging in sexual Congress with minors. And he was sending, you know, sexually suggestive messages to minors. And look, no, he wasn't. The girls were of age. It was all consensual. It's been proven. He didn't do anything wrong. If anything, we can find him a little bit creepy because he likes just legal enough girls. But yes, that's creepy. Maybe to some, but to some people, that's their thing. That's their, that's their perversion. You know, Mm -hmm. how many guys do you know? And I think we talked about this when this happened, but how many guys do you know? You know, a couple, because I do that are like, Ooh, when they see a young girl, and they say something like, oh, I bet she's barely legal or like, you know, something weird like that. And you're like, ugh, dude. <laughs> That's gross. Those guys exist. I know. Yeah. By the dozens. Mm-hmm. Not my thing. Not my thing. But it is some people's thing. Just like, you know, when Louis C.K. got in trouble, what did he get in trouble for? What did he do? He asked for consent if he could jerk off in front of women. Some said no, and he dropped it. Some said yes, and he did it. That's his perversion. That's what he. That's his thing. Right. He didn't do anything wrong. So with Chris D'Elia, what, he was gets it, a what, what, hang on. With Louis C.K., was there anyone that he just did it without getting permission from? From what I've heard, no. Okay. That's I couldn't, re- I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember if not. And not heard from what I've read and heard people talking about on podcasts and whatever. Um. Look, is it is it weird to walk up to a woman that's in a, in a green room at, in the back of a comedy club and say, hey, can I jerk off in front of you? Absolutely. Right. A little bit weird. Again, not my thing. However, 
It's not weird if she goes, yeah, and you should do it. And then you pull your dick out <laughs> and you jack off. That's not weird. That's, I that's know, I get it. Consensual sexual behavior between adults. Some people might find them weird, but at the end of the day, they're not doing anything wrong. So Chris D'Elia gets accused of all this shit and come to find out it was all consensual. All the girls were of age, but he disappears. He basically gets canceled, doesn't have his podcast anymore. His agent drops, whatever. He's gone. He disappears for months. And then yesterday he brings out this video. Now, I clicked on the video because I was curious. I, I I'm, wouldn't necessarily call myself a fan of his, but I know who he is. I've watched two of his specials, probably part, part, part of the way through. I've seen him on podcasts I watch and listen to. I've heard him on, you know. Um, so I was curious. So I clicked it and I listened. Now, how long is that video? With 10 minutes, maybe? Yeah, right out. For the entire 10 minutes, I was waiting for him to start laughing, crack a joke. Oh, you thought this wasn't serious? Why would it be? You're a comedian. You disappeared for months. Come back and, dude, could you imagine? Could you imagine if he had just come back and made that video and he'd done his stupid, that laugh that he does? And he goes, yeah, I'd like him barely legal. And laughed about it. And, and, and uh... dude, he would go viral and his career would explode. Just like Louie, all he had to do was come back and, he, and go, well, I asked. But, oh, man. I, okay, I see what you're saying. Yes, that would go viral. Yeah, it would offend then, some people. But, but, so what? but then it's going to come across like he's mocking the situation for something that he got in, that he's been. Oh man, I I, I see what you're saying. I see he what you're should saying. Mock but, the situation, but, a but, because he's a comedian, and B because he didn't do anything wrong. But he has to weigh the fact: is it is it important enough to him to get through all of the crap he's going to have to go through by that video going viral? and get through the sea of people that are going to be pissed off about it are you for a his comedian? career to explode. I are know, you a comedian or are you a, a, a fucking a, a doormat for Twitter trolls? What are you? Right. You're a comedian. So he comes back and he put, puts out this serious uh, emotional, which again, come on, bro. Like, look, if he's got problems, he's got problems. He basically comes out and says he's a sex addict. Said. Which is weird, but he didn't actually say that because he even talked about going to therapy and stuff, but he never said that he was like diagnosed as being a sex addict or anything, which is kind of, I was put aback by a little bit. Yeah. He said it through implication, which I thought yeah. was like, you just said, I thought that was a little bit weird, but dude, you're a comedian. It's almost like you're supposed to be a sex addict. It's like, it's like a musician, like we've, if a member of Motley Crue came out and said, yeah, I'm, 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 I am i am i am forgive me for all that I've done. Forgive me for my sins and all that debauchery that sold us millions of records. I'm a sex addict. What? You're what? <laughs> Your name is Nikki six. I would expect <laughs> you to be a sex addict. And I don't know if, but, any, but the, you understand what I'm saying? Like, you know, you named yourself Axel Rose you should be a sex addict. Like I, I, if he's not doing anything wrong and look, if he thinks being a sex addict is wrong and it's overtaken his life again, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to judge him for that. If he really thinks he has a problem, then get help. Okay. But where are you going to go from here? So you're going to be the sex addict comedian who apologized for all of the, um, I don't know. It, Lenny I mean, Bruce didn't go to jail for you so that you could come back and, and apologize about liking sex because it was readily available to you because of your career. And it was almost like, like he was saying, like, it's a problem that it was so easy for him to have sex with random women because of his job. No, that's not a problem. It comes with the job. Some people may think that's wrong, but it comes with the job. If those women are willing to have sex with him because they think he's funny or because they think he's funny and, and good looking or because they think he's funny, good looking and charming and oh, by the way, has money. That's up to those women. He's not doing They're not doing anything wrong if it's consensual. Well, he, he also he also played it like and we won't know whether it's true or not, 
uh, whether he's actually going out and trying to find women or, but the way he played it off was that when he would get off stage, he would have 50, you know, different messages in his inbox of people, of women wanting to get together with him. So he's kind of playing it off as if I didn't start this, like they came to me first. All I did was acknowledge that they did and said, yeah, let's get together. Again. But if that, if that is the truth, then if it's consensual, what did he do wrong? Nothing. But why is one worse than the other? So if he's the guy yeah. going out and trying to get laid, why is that wrong also? The only, it, based off this video, the only reason I would say that is because apparently he does have a fiance. Okay. Cheatings. I get it. But okay. that, but that's it. But if he's just a single comedian on the road, I don't see that it's an issue. So morally speaking, you could, you could, you could be offended because he cheated on his fiance. Well, a, it's not your fucking business. It's his and right. hers. Right. And B, he still didn't do anything wrong. He didn't, he didn't break any laws. He didn't commit any crime. Right. Yeah, he's not a good guy because he cheated on his fiance. I got news for people: comedians cheat when they're on the fucking road. Musicians look, cheat. Look when they're how on the fucking look road. look how many marriages and divorces that we see in the music industry and in the comedy industry. Yeah, well, isn't Andrew that, Dice Clay on like his eighth marriage or something? Oh God. <laughs> yeah, stop getting married. Um, <laughs> people fucking cheat when they go on the road. It's just they do. I do. Some people don't, but some people do. It just happens. Here's the difference with him is that he's looking for the situation. Oh, yeah, he's know. going into his inboxes and he's looking for those women who are reaching out to him to try to get together. No, I get that. And it's, it's specifically for this. You know what I'm saying? Like you could, he could control the situation better if he wasn't looking for it. If he wanted to go out to the bar and have a few drinks and whatnot, and I'm not condoning this, but I'm saying that if something were to happen, he were to hook up with a girl from a bar or something like that, just because that happened. I could see that more than him specifically walking off stage and automatically looking for this. But listen, one is not worse than the other. Okay. It's not. <laughs> I'm just saying, whether he goes to an inbox and sees 50 girls who are sending pictures of their tits and he says, come to my hotel room or whether he goes out to a bar after the show and there's a girl at the bar who says, yep, it's happening. We're, we're, we're going to have sex. One's not worse than the other. It's the same situation. It's just the, the moment is created a different way. He really had two, what, two routes to take to, for this, right, to move on with his career. You either, he either takes the route of I did nothing wrong and take the backlash for that. And then hopefully he overcomes it and moves on with his career. Okay. Or he gets out in front of it like he did here and says, I did do something wrong because he knows that's going to appease his fans and the media a little better by saying, I did do something wrong. I'm working on it. Now let's move forward. He had those two different options and he, this is the one he chose. Yeah. Well, it wasn't funny. <laughs> I don't think it was supposed to be. <laughs> I would have rather it been funny. You're, 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 